Hey, how's it going? This is Melinda and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing some records and discussing some concerts that I've been to and just sharing some of the memories I have. This is for a contest entry for Jeff at Various Vinyl. Jeff is a very dear friend of mine here in the vinyl community. We're very similar in age and we have very similar tastes in music. So I wanted to show my support for his channel. I really love doing contest entries and unfortunately I have not been able to do near as many as I'd like, but I do want to do this one so let me go ahead and get started. First off, I will show this. This is Motley Crue's Dr. Feelgood and uh, I saw Paul McCartney this past June so I believe that is the best concert I've ever been to, but until then this Motley Crue concert on their Dr. Feelgood tour was the best show I had ever seen. The energy of the room, the excitement, Warrant, one of my favorite bands, opened for them. They just put on just an amazing, amazing show and I really, really loved it. And the best concert story I have, because I don't have that many crazy concert memories, uh, stories to share with y'all, but one that really stands out to me was being at this concert with a friend of mine. Her and I, a, so, a security guard approached us and told us that members of a band, and I believed it was Warrant at the time, wanted to, us to come backstage. So we had gotten the backstage invite. And to say I was innocent and naive is an understatement. I had no idea why they wanted us backstage. I was just really excited. I thought I'm going to meet Motley Crue and Warrant. I'm going to get some autographs. Tommy Lee of Motley Crue was married to Heather Locklear at the time. I thought I might get to meet Heather Locklear. I was very excited and like I said, very naive. I started to go backstage. We were kind of going through this long hall and all of a sudden I saw this uh, naked lady just kind of run across from one area to another. And me and my friend just kind of stopped in our tracks. We were all of a sudden scared. We didn't know what was going on. And the security car, the security guard said, well, yes. Now to get through any further, you got to remove some of your clothing. And we were like, just looked at each other. We're like, no way, we're not going to do that. And we started to turn around. And right as we were turning around, Mickey Mars from Motley Crue had walked up and he said, no, girls, come on back. He was really nice, but his appearance just scared us that much more. Um, he just looked really scary to us. So we just turned around and took off running and went back and uh, got back at our seats. And anyway, that was just a crazy moment. You know, I didn't have MTV, we weren't, I didn't have cable, so I just did not realize what going backstage meant. I didn't know the mayhem and the craziness that went on. So, um, but anyway, even though that happened, that was an incredible show. Motley Crue kicked it and it was a, just a wonderful memory. The next band I'll show that I really loved was Kiss. And this is the Crazy Nights Tour. This is the Crazy Nights album. I was not a huge fan of this album when it came out. And I'm not trying to beat them up because I really feel like um, Kiss at this time was very scrappy. And they were just doing what they had to do to survive. You know, they were just uh, fighting their way back. And I, I appreciate that now in retrospect. And I actually like the song Crazy Nights better now than I did back then. But I wasn't a big fan, but I did go to the concert. It was the first time I got to see Kiss in concert. I was too young and my mom did not let me go see them when they were in their makeup. So unfortunately, I missed that whole era, um, sad to say. But anyway, I remember them coming out and then it was a far from sold out show. I remember Gene Simmons coming out and just kind of doing this, kind of looking around at the crowd. And I'm sure he was just looking at all the empty seats. But they did get out there and perform. I remember watching them in the very beginning of the concert. I remember I was looking at their faces, Gene and Paul's, very intently and just trying to visualize the makeup, you know, because that's what, in a perfect world, that's what I would have seen. And I was still very nostalgic towards that time. Anyway, they did the best they could. It wasn't a bad show, but it wasn't overwhelmingly great either. But anyway, I did get to see them on the Crazy Nights tour. I also then, not very long after, got to see them in the Hot in the Shade tour. 
This one was better. They were singing a lot of their classic 70s music, and I just remember enjoying that show better. And then I had a boyfriend at the time who got free tickets to see Kiss Revenge Tour, and uh, they were killer on this tour. I really loved it. I remember great white opening for them and Kiss just being really strong and I really enjoyed this one. And of course, uh, this past March, I did finally get to see them with their makeup. Unfortunately, it wasn't Ace and Peter, but I did get to see the End of the Road tour and it was fantastic. So anyway, I really enjoyed that. Garth Brooks was another really great concert I got to go to back in 1993 as a Valentine's gift from my fiance, who I am now married to. He bought me uh, and got took me to a Garth Brooks concert, and it was really an incredible show. And Garth was a, a huge Kiss fan, so I think his concert performances were inspired by Kiss. He's just super energetic. He was a lot of fun. He really sang all of his great hits. One memorable moment for me was a moment where he just said, you know, and he'd been playing all of his great songs and we were having a really great time. He just kind of laid back and he said, you know, I'd like to sing one song that really means a lot to me and is a favorite of mine. He then laid back and sang Candle in the Wind by Elton John. It was a great vocal performance. Uh, it had the crowd just going crazy, and that is a standout moment for me that I'll never forget. Martina McBride opened for him on this uh, concert, and just what a great show. We were at a really small venue, so instead of going to somewhere really, really big, he had three or four days in a row where he performed at this small venue. So anyway, I was very fortunate to get to see him in this In Pieces tour. This was the album I believe he was supporting at the time. So anyway, very happy to see Garth Brooks. Speaking of Elton John, I have got to see Elton John in concert and I picked a greatest hits album because basically I saw him uh, probably 10 years, maybe 15 years ago, something like that. He had a residency in Las Vegas and I got to see him and he was singing his greatest hits. He was not supporting an album at the time. It was just him and singing his greatest hits. He had a really wonderful show. And it was a very subdued concert. And um, you know, you didn't really have a lot of moments of standing up. It was a sit down show, but there was just something very, very special about seeing a legendary act sitting at his piano, singing the songs of your lifetime. Just really, really incredible. A couple moments that really stand out to me are uh, when he sang Someone sang, uh, Saved My Life Tonight. That is one of my favorite songs of his. That one in Empty Garden um, that he did a tribute to John Lennon. Those are two of my very favorites, but there's so many, you know, it's just really hard to say. Another standout moment for me was, like I said, it was a very subdued concert. Everybody sat down most of the time. But he, bright, he, he started singing, I'm Still Standing. And all of a sudden, everybody kind of came to their feet and started uh, dancing and really getting into that song. And obviously it says, I'm Still Standing, so maybe they thought that was appropriate. But I also think that that song just represents so much to so many people. Um, you know, when we go through struggles in life, that's kind of an anthem, I'm Still Standing. And the, the words and everything about that song is so incredible. So that was a very good show. Loved getting the chance to see Elton John. I feel very privileged to have had that opportunity. My favorite band in the whole world. Uh, finally, I finally got to see them. This was, I call this their Red Album. This was a wonderful uh, tour and I got to see them twice during this tour. And I got to see them a couple of times, once in Evansville, Indiana, and another time in Indianapolis, Indiana. And I just remember for maybe the first half hour of the host show, just standing there in absolute awe that Eddie Van Halen was in front of me playing his guitar. I was just in total awe of that. Just couldn't get past it for a while. And then also I really loved hearing Michael Anthony's uh, harmonies, his wonderful voice that really, he was just great. I really enjoyed seeing that. Uh, Sammy was in a really, he had this crazy long blonde hair at the time. I believe he was wearing plaid pants 
and he put on a really great show too. Now, arguably, I would probably say, in my humble opinion, the David Lee Roth music is better. I think I like it better, but man, do I not love, I, I love Sammy Hagar too. I love his voice. He is definitely an incredible singer, and the music uh, from Van Halen at that time is something that I really love as well. So getting to see them in concert was really great. I was with my best friend and her husband. I was their third wheel for so many things in life at the time. I didn't have a boyfriend, so I would always go around with them. And man, did we have a good time. We stood up, we screamed, we yelled, we danced. We just had a really great time. And the very next morning I had to work and I had a very professional job at a bank. And I remember I was opening an account for this um, young guy who, he was opening an account. We were sitting in an office and I was explaining to him about the account. And he just kept leaning back and smiling really big. And I just finally kind of stopped and I just said, you know, what's up? <laughs> and he finally said, I saw you at the concert last night and boy, you look like you were having a good time. And I thought that was really funny because here I'm trying to be all professional when less than 12 hours ago I was screaming my head off. So anyway, just a really great concert, really great memory. And thankfully, uh, a few years ago, I did finally get to see Eddie um, Van Halen with David Lee Roth. And so I've seen both incarnations of the band and I really enjoyed it. A couple years ago, I got to see the Eagles and another really great band, some, you know, a band I really had always been wanting to see, and they were just out there singing their greatest hits. I think they're on this tour in 2017, there might have been five or six venues that they went to, very, very small little tour, and Deacon Fry, Glenn's son, was um, in the band because uh, Glenn had already passed away. I believe having Deacon Fry in the band was... Don Henley's way of being able to continue on with the Eagles. I think if um, Deacon wasn't in the band, he would have had a very hard time moving on. And anyway, it was a really great show. They performed all their wonderful hits. Another member of the band was Vince Gill. Vince Gill was there helping with the harmonies, playing guitar, helping pull the weight. He also sang a really couple really good songs of Glenn Fry's. One was Lying Eyes. I remember him doing a performance of that. And it was really good. But I remembered him just being kind of subdued, not a lot of personality, and just trying to blend in. And after thinking about it for a while, I just kind of came to the conclusion that that was his way of being respectful of the other members of the band who have always been in the band. And I think he just wasn't trying to steal any of the spotlight but just in awe himself of being performing with the Eagles. So uh, even though I thought he could have had a little more personality, I totally understand what he was doing. I believe that's where he was coming from on that. And Joe Walsh absolutely stole the show at this concert. I would say close to 20% of the set list was Joe Walsh. It, he sang Life's Been Good and uh, Rocky Mountain Way. He sang his James Gang hits and his Eagles songs. He rocked his guitar. He was fierce and so much fun. So he really, really stole the show and this was a really great concert. I'm so glad I got to see the Eagles. I also just wanna mention a few bands that are on my bucket list. Ones I really wanna see and hope I get the opportunity they're not getting any younger, so time is ticking, but I really hope I get to see the zombies. I would love to see them perform the songs from Odyssey and Oracle. This is in my top three favorite albums of all time. I have not got to see the zombies, and I would really, really love to see the zombies before something happens and I'm no longer able to and the opportunity and the window is closed. Another band I would like to see and probably have no excuse for not seeing yet is Cheap Trick. I love Cheap Trick. I have not seen them in concert. They are the hardest working rock band there is out there and I'm hoping to have an opportunity where they're going to come around again really close and I can see them. I love Cheap Trick and I would love to see them in concert. And finally, also, I would love to see Blue Oyster Cult. They are one of my favorite bands too. I really love them. Uh, Don't Fear the Reaper is one of my favorite songs. Burning For You is incredible. They have a lot of great music. 
and I have yet to see them in concert and I'm really hoping to get the opportunity. So those are my bands and uh, just some of my concert memories. Uh, check out Jeff at Various Vinyl. Check out his channel. He's a really great guy. And he's doing some really interesting videos and incredible videos. He's an incredible, really great musician. So thank you so much, Jeff, for the opportunity. And thanks, everybody, for watching. Please subscribe and leave your comments below. Take care. Bye-bye.